Oh, good, you're here. Um, I just came in. I was doing a bunch of sledding out in the snow, uh, but I thought I'd come in just to tell you quickly about uh, how Lorentz transforms work, uh, because I thought you might want to know some of that. So, uh, before we get too far, let's just uh, let's just get into it. All right. So, <clears throat> if you remember before, in previous videos, I showed you that if you had some x and y coordinates um, in some some uh, in some system where you had x y coordinates or home frame, that if you had some event that you wanted to plot in the other frame, uh, I showed you basically how you could do that. So uh, we basically went over how to construct an other frame, uh, how to do t prime, how to do x prime. I also showed you um, uh, very briefly, if you remember. Uh, so one of the things we we're interested in is if I have, let's say, you know, one second, two second, three seconds, um, we showed how to calibrate our t prime axis, for instance, uh, so that we could kind of put the correct values here. Um, and so that we could basically graph things from one place to another. And we, you know, we showed how to do that. We basically showed how, how to set that up using the hyperbolic graph paper. Um, I even showed really briefly how you could get basically the value of what this value was in t uh, for t prime. If you remember just really briefly how this went, uh, the, the idea is that um, we realized that uh, this is actually, um, this point at three seconds is a space-time interval. And we said, well, wait a second, space-time intervals, I can write that delta s squared is equal to delta t squared minus uh, delta x squared. But remember, this delta s squared can also be delta s prime squared. So basically, it, even though the the um, this event is actually a um, is is in the prime frame, uh, it can be it can be represented by the same equation in t and x uh, because space time intervals are true in all frames, right? So if you remember that that, that was kind of our basic argument. Um, by doing this, if you remember, and by understanding that the slope uh, of that t prime is uh, is beta. We basically found that we could then write this um, as uh, um, as uh, uh, this delta s prime squared. We could write this as delta t squared minus this beta delta t also squared. And if you remember, we could we factored that out. We got a, a, a delta t squared delta t squared that we factored out. And we got a one minus beta. Oh, I can draw a one minus beta squared. Uh, that we basically could um, could bring out of there, um, and then we basically found, and again, remember that this delta s prime here is also delta t prime because it's it's actually on that same axis. So this is also equal to delta t prime squared, and so we basically could get what that value is in delta p t prime squared. We could write it in terms of t in in terms of our t coordinates, our actual coordinates over here, um, and we found that delta t squared was just equal to that delta t prime squared divided by 1 minus beta squared. And if we take the square root of everything, we just got that delta t is equal to delta t prime divided by the square root of 1 minus beta squared. And I know I went kind of fast through that right now. My hope is that you remember it a bit from the, the last video or from the, um, or from the actual, uh, um, from, from the book. Uh, if not, go back and look, look back through it. I, again, it should become pretty obvious. And what we do is we're going to call this 1 over 1 minus beta squared, so 1 over 1 minus beta squared, the square root, we're going to give that the name of gamma. And it just comes up so frequently, this, this 1 over 1 minus beta squared. It comes up so frequently that we just give this this name of gamma. We basically define it as gamma. All right. So we kind of did that. But that only helps us with finding out, uh, let's say, the t value of something whenever it's on the t prime axis. It doesn't help us. Uh, we didn't do anything with the x-axis, um, uh, and and we, we we basically don't know um, a, a lot of things about this. We also um, we've only done it for things on the t prime axis. If we had another point, let's say here, interesting point p, um, uh, we have no way of determining its uh, t. Uh, it, if if we plotted it in t prime and x prime, there's no way of actually finding. Uh, what the t and x values are. And so um, that's where the Lorentz equations come in. Again, we've shown how to find these by plotting them, but we really want to be able to calculate them 
uh, and actually find them directly. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole derivation because this video is probably getting too long already. Uh, but what I will do is I'll just point you to the actual place where it's shown. This is figure 5.7. And what you find is that they're, okay, they used a, a point E instead of a point P. Uh, but what they've, what, what uh, Thomas More has done is basically using some really simple geometric arguments uh, to show that basically you can get uh, the x and y, uh, x and t values of any points uh, given the t prime values, or vice versa. And then you can basically use some really simple um, uh, geometry to basically get these. Um, I'm not going to go through that. I would urge you to go through the text and kind of work through it. And if you have any questions, come and ask me. Uh, what I will just point out is that these are called the Lorentz transformations. Uh, or Lynch transforms, um, uh, and they're all given uh, in your book. Uh, it's right here. It's equations R5.11 uh, through R, uh, uh, A through D. Um, I'll also point out that there are what are called the inverse Lorentz transforms, which do the same thing going backwards. I just wanted to go through a really quick example. Um, so let's say we have some points uh, that's t equals um, to 3.0 seconds and x equal to 4.0 seconds. And let's say that um, our, our other frame is going with a speed of 3 fifths. Well, again, these, um, these Lorentz transformations are pretty straightforward. If I want to find my delta t prime, and it's, I'm using delta t prime. In this case, um, it, that just means the difference between two, uh, the time between two points. In this case, you notice I'm actually using t. My delta t is just going to be the difference between the origin and t, um, since I'm using the origin, delta t is just equal to t, right? Because it's just 3 minus 0. All right, so if we go ahead and try to do that, um, all we have to do is we just plug this into this equation. All right, so we're going to plug that in there. And we're just going to get that this is equal to gamma um, delta t min whoops, minus theta delta x. All right. Um, now, we can work out what gamma is. Gamma is just equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever beta is, in this case 3 fifths, squared. And we take the square root of that whole thing. In this case, if we actually do that calculation, I've done it ahead of time, it's 1.25. Gamma is always larger than 1. If you ever get a gamma that's smaller than 1, you, you haven't done it correctly. Oops, that's falling off the page. Um, sorry. That's equal to 1.25. OK. Um, so we, we've calculated that. I'll get my head out of the way. There we go. Um, uh, so that's equal to 1.25. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'll bring it over here since my head is going to keep getting in the way. Um, so now we can go ahead and finish our calculation. We get delta t prime is equal to 1.25. We put in our, our t, which is 3.0 seconds. We put in our beta, which is 3 fifths. We put in our delta x. Again, it's just from the origin. So delta x is equal to x. So this is 4.0 seconds. All right. And then we, oh my goodness. And then we do that whole calculation. Sorry, I seem to have lost my, there we go. Um, we do that whole calculation. Again, I've done that ahead of time with the magic of video. And we get 0 0.75 seconds. All right. So now we can calculate what the delta t prime is. We can do the same thing with delta x, um, uh, delta x prime. It's no different. We just use this equation. Um, and if you try and do that at home, you should get something like 2.75 seconds. And so really quickly, that's a way for us to go from, gosh, I keep on writing stuff on top of me. Delta x prime is zero uh, is 2.75 seconds. All right. And so that's a really quick way of actually go of, of getting um, our t prime and x prime values from our t and x values. Um, and this is nice because we can then do the actual calculation or we can do the actual plotting of it um, and then make sure that the values we get when we do our, our hyperbolic graph paper and our plotting and everything um, actually matches up with what we get for our calculated values. And they should all match up. And that's the whole idea. Um, so I hope that helps out. Uh, that's the whole idea behind Lorentz transforms. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know, and I'll try to answer them. Have a wonderful one. I'm going to go play out in the snow.